Hello and welcome. I am the Restless Kaiser. Uh, I am James Workshop. And we are Modeling Link for Advantage. Advantage. Hey, not bad for the first time, James. Yeah, when I so, something pretty special here. We do. You want to say, though, um, I'm down at my friendly local gaming store, of which Mr. James Workshop is one of the directors. Yeah. There is a bit of background noise, but we wanted to get this fat boy open yeah. and have a look. Open today. Open so, today. Yeah, on the day. Yeah. So you're going to have uh, some close-ups yep. as we go through the box. Uh, so, should we talk about the box art, I think? Let's start with that. So what they're looking at, rather than get the smaller reference at. model. You're getting the smaller <laughs> reference model. I love chaos. this. I love this, the kind of fantasy art look, the yeah. reds, the backgrounds. Like, this is, it just reminds me of Hero Quest and stuff. Uh, yeah, you know, quite a lot. Games as a kid, you want to move miniatures around, you want to roll dice, and you want to win. Yeah. This is, this box, and what about the weight of it, James? It weighs a ton. <laughs> There is probably a like lot of three, four kilos going on. It's very heavy. All right, all what right. Enough of the nonsense, then. Yeah. Shall we crack on? Um, I'll put a link down in the description to uh, the Facebook page so you can get in touch with RP Count. As you can probably imagine, they do offer discounts and mail order on all of this. We stuff. certainly do. Yeah, it's fifteen yeah. percent discount or twenty percent if you're a member of the store. Yeah, members, members, great. Wow, look at that. That's a, lot, a lot of plastic. plastic. Where's my bit? Where's your bit? My bit. Oh yeah, we've already decided how we're yeah. gonna split these. So this is like five sprues deep here. It is pretty deep. So do you wanna take the cults out and I'll take yep. the scenery out? Separate it by, start oh no, we've got that. beasts as well, haven't we? Oh, we beasties, we beasties. Am I right in believing we're actually getting some Plastic Furies in here? Yeah, I've got them over here. You've, oh, you've I've already got, got them? Uh, he he Hecatrix? Hecatrix? What are the other guys called? I don't remember what they're called. Yeah, the Chaos Dudes, right? <laughs> no, we've got, we've got the, the Flappy Furies. The Flappy Furies. And then we've got the dogs with wings. And the dogs with wings. Whose names I can't remember. Let's check the book before we start, So shall we? The, um, the Flappy Furies... Mm -hmm. Flappy furious. Oh, there's loads more under here. Very Should we talk about the sprues and yeah, then we'll go through go the paper first. and stuff? Because that's what people are here for, right? Yeah. Yeah. So okay. Let's pop this out so, of the way for a moment. Yeah. And shall we push this over to one side? Yeah. I mean, that that's a lot. That's a lot of scenery. Uh, I think you might need to shimmy that over a bit more. Over a bit more. Yeah. People don't want to see the corner of the box there. <laughs> okay. okay. Do you want to do this first? Because this is straightforward. Yeah. All right. So let's see what we got in terms of duplication. How many different ones? Ooh. Yeah. I, uh, are they the same spring? No, no, they're different springs. They're different. Um, I'm not guaranteeing that these are identical. They look identical. Yeah, they Maybe are. Maybe subtle differences. That's not. That's, that's not, not that. one of them. No. That's not that. So there's five different sprues. Five different sprues for a total of two, three, four, five, six, seven. Total Do seven these look like sprues so scenery. Don't quote me. These look a lot like the Made in China sprues in comparison to the Made in Nottingham sprues that we have. Here. Yeah, yeah. I think I think they're kind of different. But for that all being said, I mean, the quality's improved for the, sure. The quality looks pretty good. Yeah. Um, I mean, we've obviously we've not built this yet. No. There's, there's certainly a quantity of scenery mm. here. I mean, this feels better than the Kill Team kit. Yeah. It's at least comparable, yeah. and yeah. that was really impressive. Uh -huh. um, so certainly we've got these kind of four key sprues here which are going to build the bulk of our walls and so mm. forth and then these and then other sprues are going to decorate walkways and barriers and barricades yeah, ladders a giant, a giant fallen man face head. <laughs> the face look so you can do you want the do you want the mustachioed face well, obviously keep that separate excuse me yeah i mean this looks like the kind of place that a chaos warband is going to yeah, have a fight two of them <laughs> or two of them yeah all right i don't know how much more there is to say about this this is going to be my job yeah. though isn't it? I'm going to be oh, painting 100%. this off. Yeah, yeah, you are going to be doing this part. You want so people can see the finish on those? Yeah. Uh, that should be good. Okay. I don't know how spikes. We... I can feel myself already leaning over a table and oh, pulling yeah. a bit of scenery yeah. away with me. Yeah. The, the, you do get those. They did that with the kill team scenery. Some of the spikes like under the arches were yeah. really sharp. Yeah. Let me just get and that model and also yeah, like, my wrist removed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was good stuff. Absolutely. So yeah, um, they're nice. They're nice. I don't know how I'm going to paint these yet. I feel I should try contrast. Mm. But I feel I should paint these the way I know how to paint. I'm, right. not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. 
sure. You're going to put a lot of us. contrast paint on there. Yeah. We've got big dingaling bell as well. We've got big dingaling. So we're like and the skeleton holding his dingaling. It's like, I think I'm going to need to. You're going to they need all to do. Wow. We've got bells, so they so could got, be. Got your big dingaling. And then you've got a skeleton holding his dingling. Ding and, dong. And then another two fellas over here doing the exact same thing. Very interesting choice of so is modeling this, there. Is this going to be usable in 40k though, James? Is this two Chaos Wasteland? Nah. No? Nah. I don't no. think so at all. all right. I think that's 40k usable. This feels better than a battlefield in a box by quite a lot. Mm. So we put these to one side yes. and let's start looking at the other bits. So, so let's start with the beasts. These are the interesting bit that I want to look at. So we leave them for last. Look at. Let's look at the beasts. Do you remember what they're called? So we've got harpies and devil dogs, isn't it? Devil dogs. Mo devil dogs. Yeah. Be we beasties. Yeah. They've all got 18-inch melters are strapped to their face. They're all devil dogs. Something like that. Oh yeah, devil dog is a thing in 40k, <laughs> yep. okay, isn't it? Yeah. So they come okay. in a kind of combined sprue. That's definitely both there. Uh, and we've got two so of each got, sprue type. Yeah, so we've got two of each sprue type. That is how it goes. So we've got a double sprue, which is mostly full of devil dog by the looks of it. But there are some harpy bits mixed in there because I can see little stabby hands. Then... That is... These are the furry bits from the dogs. Yeah, I think this is all all, all dog. All natural dog right there. All natural. Actually, looking at these bodies here, this looks a bit fishy. There is a bit of fish. There's a bit of fish in it's there. It's a little piscine, isn't it? Yeah. Piscine, very nice, very nice, very chaos. Mm. So I don't they kind of look a lot like they—they they look like Zinchian versions of the uh, flesh hounds, almost. Right. Because they yeah. the same faces. Yeah, I, I felt that they were they were kind of resonances. Having mm. looked at the complete models, it's mostly this this piece right here that's reminding me of it. This sort of the, the, the fanned. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. Dinosaur from Jurassic Park that does like the, the open thing. predator mouth. Yeah, a that same too, kind of yeah. shape, isn't it? All right. Well, they're excited because they weren't. Expected. They were. I didn't expect harpies at all. It's been a while since we had models for them. Yeah. Um, and I was looking at uh, who's the other company that does bits that, like Spellcrow or no, Mantic. No, no. Or the Mantic. Yeah, Mantic. Mantic. Mantic do some harpies for the Dark Held, uh, Dark Chaos Dwarf for the Chaos so Dwarf. Abyssal Dwarfs. Abyssal Dwarfs. Yeah. Yeah. So they have harpies yeah. for them that look really nice. But now I don't need them anymore. So. Dwarf harpies. Yeah. No, dwarf just, harpies. Dwarf but they're, they're Chaos Dwarfs, so they have their own harpies. Are they quite fat? But with no, no, they're skinny, and they're uh, all little pylons and things. They're I don't know about skinny dwarves. I don't know what the viewers think. Yeah. Skinny dwarves no, 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 they're not dwarves. Oh, right, they're just no, in the army. They're harpies, but they're in the army. Yeah. Right, I was thinking anyway, skinny that's dwarves with wings. I got wrong. Okay, Let's go for your your boys. Well, your actually, gentlemen. is there a lady in there too? I remember. Actually, is there a lady in here? This is not actually mine. Is it not? I'm not actually having either of these warbands. Nice. I am so sold on. The, I was pretty sold on the serpent dudes, yeah. and then I realised that so was everybody. Right. Else. So, okay, second best choice. The, the crow dude. The the it's the guy on stilts with the wings <laughs> who's like some ambush dude. Right. I've got to have that model. Because only in a Warhammer setting can a dude who goes into battle jumping off things in stilts. <laughs> Be a combat enhancement. Okay. So the combat enhancement force, the unmade, they're also led by a guy on stilts. They are, but he might have metal stilts. He does they? have metal they stilts. Like they're just lashed to his legs oh. with a bit of string. They're like goblin stilts. They're like they're like proper wow. with little crow, three little crow wow. toes. Like, yeah. They look ridiculous. Fantastic. And I was like, and he's even in a bit of a silly pose. He is, yeah, he's like a yeah. yeah. It's like this, and that's what I love about Warhammer. Uh -huh. Hated it as a kid. It's like this is not realistic. Sick. Now I'm like. Warhammer is a figure game for mm -hmm. cartoons. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, very so, serious cartoons. So these, then they're, they're not they're not corn berserkers, are they? No, they're chaos beastmen. With they're not beastmen, they're cultists. Chaos cultists. These are cultists with a beast theme. Cultists with a beast theme. In fact, I think you've got a dog on that sprue. There is the dog on this sprue. They get so a this dog. looks like the leader and doggo sprue. The leader and doggo sprue. Uh, with part of the non-leader. Yeah, there's another part there that looks like it's for the. Dog, the beast master, gentleman. So, um, for anybody that's had a look at some of the Blackstone Fortress sprues, mm. we can clearly see the kind of um, that same process. Somewhat These reminiscent. models are going together one way. <laughs> yeah, you can sure. see the cots have been put together on a computer, so they've got some really quite dynamic poses. Yeah, but you're not going to have many bits left over. Some of them do have weapon options. Yep, and they are separated on the sprue. Right. So some of them have two weapons. So like, I know that one of my guys is is like has a pair of flails and also has a mace. 
this, like yep. a double-ended flail. But you can change the weapon options on some of them, which doesn't cost points. Uh, just like it's a flat-pointed model, yep. so uh, I guess do your research because one of those weapons is going to be better. Definitely, <laughs> probably the one that does more damage in this most game. of the time. Yeah. yeah. As a gentleman who intends to play goblins. Oh, you're gonna go. You definitely come with the goblins. I'm thinking gloom spike gets. Um, Squid hoppers look gonna, round. It's gonna be a lot of one damage. You reckon? Yeah. There's gonna be a lot of guys with a pointy, like a shiv, just yeah. doing one damage. They specifically said on the Warhammer community page that um, one stabber isn't likely to do much, but four is gonna take down almost anything. Right. So they're gonna be very low pointed, large number of models forces, which I don't know how it's gonna work because you have 20 models. So if you're if if somebody else is rocking up with nine, they're only risking nine models. Whereas if I'm rocking up with 17 of my 20 and losing three, that's quite a bad loss. So that's the that's the beastie beastie boys. Yeah, it's actually um, Johnny B is taking this. Is he? Oh, yeah, I'm Johnny B's taking this one. So although I'm I'm getting this, I'm actually just painting up all the background Seriously. stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll come to what I'm okay. doing next. So uh, Johnny B's going to be using these. Hopefully, you see that on the channel. So James, the, the iron golems. The iron golems. So these have got a kind of Victorian uh, deep sea diver thing going on. <laughs> yeah. With those bubble helmets. It's all artifice. Yeah, somewhere between Romans, Victorians. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice. It's gladi gladiators with a with a, a nautical theme. Look at the size of this guy. James. He's an ogre. Oh, he's an camera. actual ogre. That's not just his nickname. No, no, no. He's a straight up ogre. He's a straight up ogre. Yeah, in the warband. This gentleman has his back. Uh, that is you, significantly, and those guys are quite big. They are, yeah. He's 30, 30 wounds. 30 wounds. Which I think is about the most there is at the moment. Wow, yeah. that's a lot of wounds. Um, interestingly, I spotted in the book while I was reading through it the other day, one of the runes that you can get, so runes determine a lot of things, it seems. Yeah, one of the runes you can get is gargantuan. So like hidden in the rules, in the main rule book, there's a gargantuan thing. So I'm guessing like giants or dragons or something like that are going to turn up eventually. Well, maybe as wandering monsters, because that's yeah. a thing. Yeah, for sure. Because that's a thing. Yeah. Didn't they do something with Blackstone Fortress or Shadespire or something? There was like, you could have play a giant. Yeah, yeah. Then, like a Christmas uh, release. Yeah, for, the White Dwarf. for Night Vault, they did a giant card. So you right. could play a Gargant in, in the game. In, in Shadespire? And, uh, yeah, and it was ridiculous. Or Night Vault. Yeah. It, it can only move like two, though. It yeah. really didn't. Yeah. It, yeah. it was great to yeah. see it. So it, might, it might, maybe works a little bit more. Uh -huh. So these guys in the story, I think these apparently these guys make the equipment for other chaos cults they, is that the idea? Um, as far as I understand it, they don't make it for other Chaos Cults. Uh, they just make equipment, and if someone wants to buy it, they buy it. It's not specific. Oh, right, um, right. And they use their best stuff. So their storyline in Warcry, because yeah. they have, for the narrative missions, there's like a storyline for oh, your yeah, group. Yeah. Their storyline is that they've seen a bunch of people using rubbish weapons, but they've also seen some specific people using really good weapons, so they're trying right. to work out where they're from. Right. Um, Seems that this heavy, skilled artifact this is a really big blob of heavy metal with a spike on the end of it. That is chaos artifice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It doesn't seem it requires a lot of observation now. <laughs> no. It's like, hmm, can I make this heavier and more spiky? <laughs> right, let's do that. If I do, does it require an ogre in it? Mm. Yes. Mm. Then I'll so get one. Some separate pieces. Yeah, there some, are. So there's some customization going on. Uh -huh. I do like these. I mean, these look like they've got together nicely. Definitely. I don't know how I'd feel about having to take a second kit. Yeah, there's going to be these. duplicate models. Um, which and is an and issue. identical. Yeah, completely identical models. I mean, there's like one one choice of weapons in this kit, I think, in this specific one. Right. This is the only one I've really looked at, I'll be honest. Right. So Look at what's that? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> That is just a giant pole with a meaningless circle around the end of it. That meaningless Not circle that. might lead somewhere, though. I think it might connect up with some other piece. Yeah, it looks like it's got so a little we'll, you know, on the we'll, side. We'll know when you've got it all assembled. Yeah, exactly, which will be very quick. So you're hoping to get these get these put together, because as a store, you're going to be running a, a campaign. We will be running a campaign, yes, which will be streamed, recorded, put up on YouTube as well. So yeah, Because no, no, we kind of missed the trick on that with uh, Necromunda and Kill Team. We did, yeah. Sort of it was before. We talked really about doing it. Anything. Yeah, so we're going to get on with that. Right, well, those were the sprues then, James. Should we look. look at the paper? Let's look at the paper. This is going to be the fun part because we don't actually know the game very well. We're going to try and talk <laughs> about what all the cards mean. So 
push the box back over if you want to get the bits out. We'll try and make some room here. So let's talk about the paper mm. and whatever else may be in the bottom, of course. I like opening these boxes, although I'm failing to do that. <laughs> even though it's still still sticky. We all like things we're not good. Just uh, have a bit of a sniff of the lid. Mm. You see even the damage the sprues have done to the yeah. inside of the lid. So actually that's cool. I didn't know that. So on this side is the usual here's your separator for the sprues, but yeah. on the other side you got a little poster. A nice little poster. And the main purpose of the this box I think, is to protect the stuff from is, damage yeah. from the sprues. But, so they put the side that it doesn't matter if it gets damaged yeah. up. It's nice, so, that's cool. I like that as a feature. Get that up on a wall. Right. There's your board. There's some bits of out. Should we get this lot out, get the little box out of the way, yeah. and then. And bases in the bottom. And, and dices. Bases and dices and, and baggies and a ruler. Pretty standard. It's not very baggies. interesting. Bases, that, it's nice just that they've started doing that. I've got I love dice. baggies. I love baggies. You can't go wrong with some baggies. What we got? Scan to read a sample chapter of the book today. So I guess they're. Oh, so they're the not book. giving you the sample chapter. They're giving you a QR code. A QR code for the sample chapter. To get chapter. a PDF of the sample chapter. Right. Where do we want to start then? Other than putting this this way, so people know what we're doing. Walk right. <laughs> uh, let's get the book open. Let's get the book open. Okay. Uh, so. I think we start by opening everything. We start by opening everything. The paper in here yeah. is only shrink wrapped. It's not in a stiff baggy. Mm -hmm. So probably that paper was quite important. And Especially with the board on top, because the board's a bit you're always going to see. See, there's still... I'll see if I can get that on the camera. There's still a tiny bit of damage. It hasn't damaged anything. But on here... Can I get the reflection right? Yeah. Uh, now I've lost it. So right here, there is a mark from the sprues going through the paper. Yeah. It's not marked any of the actual markers, so it's not really an So issue. while we've got that open, actually, you know, the viewers can oh, have a bit of a look at that while you're opening the other bits. Um, one of the things that I had noticed di as distinct from uh, Kill Team yeah. is the warbands do not come with tokens. Not specific to them, no. They don't come with any tokens. When you buy a warband box. Right. So with Kill Team, if you bought the Fangs of Ulrich, you got the Space Marine rules. Right. And the tokens. Mm -hmm. In this, the tokens come with the battlefields. Oh, okay. I see what you mean. Right, I've caught up. So you can't just I mean, I don't know how integral to the game the tokens are. Mm -hmm. um, so that set of tokens is going to have to do unless you buy another battlefield. Mm -hmm. And I'm guessing the Corpse Rack Mausoleum and the other battlefields are all going to have their own themes. Yeah, they've got their own themed tokens, right. yeah. yeah. So if you... Which I guess is another reason trying to encourage you to buy the Star Kit. Mm. I am utterly failing <laughs> to open this. It's like a dex check and I just rolled a one. Yeah. How, it's that way around, right, okay. You meant to do it that way, but they've stuck a sticker over the bit that you actually Do you opened. think the sticker is where the bit, that's the bit yeah. that I can't find? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if we were clever, we would have done all this off camera and Probably. everything. Probably. Yeah. I'm, you know, if I'm even cleverer, I'll edit this. Who, who's, who's clever there? Who's clever? We're in. Right. Oh, we're in! What have I got? <laughs> I got the twists. Okay, the so twist these are all the separate decks. These are nice little boxes. Um, I kind of wish that they had like a seal over them them, but they are boxes. I've got a camera over here, I don't know why I'm doing that. So they're little boxes, but they're not sealed on the end. So once you've opened them, they have the capacity to slide around inside the box. Especially when you get your grubby pizza fingers yeah, on them. But they've got the symbol on them, which is nice to tell you what it is. So that's twisty arrows for the twist. This is. So we've got some fighter cards. Oh, victory conditions. So I could start putting these. Oh, you don't need to be in. So that's your fighter cards with a fighty picture on it, the sword and the shield. What are the cards? we got? Uh, your beasts. Your whatever these guys are called. They're the warbands. Yeah, so this is both warbands, right? Or just I one? I assume so. Both warbands in one packet. Yeah. Oh, it tells us this is the battlefield card deck two, okay. deck three. So this is like your twist okay, and, your, so yeah. and your battlefield and so, so forth. That's, right. that's your symbol for twists. That's your symbol for battlefield and deployment. Or just the deployment field. stuff is quite interesting. And that's field and then you've deployment. seen that. Yeah. Uh, ah, right. So here are the the, the, the kind of war scroll cards. Mm -hmm. If you want to show them, have a look at those. So we've got the chaos beasts in there. Okay. So we'll explain these as we go. So we've got chaotic beasts. 
So Chaotic Beasts are not part of the force, and they've given you two of them, so either of you can use them. So I'll put one of them to one side for myself. Um, and it shows the universal abilities that the beasts get as well when they're part of your battle. But also I think you can tame them and add them yeah. to your warband in the campaign. Yes. So, yeah. So those abilities... Don't know how that works. No, no, we'll see. We'll see more of that later. Yeah. So then uh, this, the fighters for the yeah. two warbands. So you've got the names of the members of the uh, warbands. So we've got the Untamed Beasts and all of their separate members. And their abilities that they can use with your dice rolls. Then, that's the Untamed Beasts. That's the Iron Golems. What other bits of card have we got? Is that all? What other bits of card? No, so uh, I just opened the paper pack and it has the things that you might expect to find in there. There wasn't mm. any additional cardboard. Okay. Um, we have... What's in the box? What's in the box? Yeah, so this is just telling you what to expect. And a getting started kit as well. That's good. Very, and, uh, and even an idiot sheet, which I may find useful. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, that's handy, yeah. That's very handy. With the new format instruction booklets. Mm -hmm. um, so, I like these a lot. I know some people are not a fan of building things the way it tells you in the box. Mm. I'm all about getting my stuff on the table quickly. And this new format with the collar, it tells you the grey is the piece you've already got, the blue is the bit you add to it, the yellow is where you apply the glue. Thank you for informing me. That is. As a heavily colorblind man, I've never looked at the colors, so I didn't <laughs> know what they colors, even meant. No, no. <laughs> um, but yeah, so no, they're it, great, great. It, it really takes you through, and if there are options, mm -hmm. it, it clearly it's indicates a banner. it. It's a banner. It's a banner. Or perhaps a mighty or hammer. Or a giant hammer. Or a giant hammer. I'll show the camera. You're going with a giant hammer, aren't you, James? We'll see. Depends what the banner does. So there's a gentleman with a banner, is the big thing we were looking at earlier, or he just gets a hammer. But the guy with the banner still has a hammer. Still has a hammer? Still has a hammer. If I had a hammer, I'd hammer in the evening, mate. Would you? Yeah. Um, so All that's... Right. <laughs> That's a song set. It's a song. It's so actually, it's actually quite Raptorix. Raptorix. That they're definitely like dicky birds with dragon heads. Right. A bit fishy looking dicky birds. I mean, I don't know what they are. Um, the harpies look nice. The harpies look great. Or furies. Oh, sorry, or furies. furries. <laughs> oh, let's not. So now, a cautionary tale in relation to the scenery building instructions. The in the kill team set, they gave you instructions on how to build the scenery, but they then gave you missions in the starter kit that you couldn't build with if you'd built the scenery where you built it from right, the instructions. Okay. Okay. Um, that was very mealy mouthed, but there was there was some value in not just doing it this way. Right. That is um, lovely. That's going to look really good on a table. It's going to look amazing. It's going to look amazing. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm really stoked about the scenery set, to be honest. Yeah. We haven't even looked at the board yet. No. <laughs> so, we've got the rule book. The rule book, which you can buy separately. Uh, it does have... Ah, so, things like those victory cards and stuff. They're all in there, too. They're yeah. in the rule book, too. The rule book is rocking up at 160-ish pages. We've got some rosters. This is a pretty flimsy softback, I have to say. Yeah, this is 160 pages. Perfect bind. That means they've superheated some glue here. There's a librarian in me. Yep. Superheated some glue in here, but because this has got a lot of glossy pages, mm -hmm. if you've ever had a graphic novel where all the pages came out, these this way of making yep. a book is very vulnerable to that. Also, um, as a man who used to work in a make-on-demand <laughs> book factory at one point, um, when we received these, two of them were damaged. Like when when the shop received them, there were two damaged copies, and what had happened was they hadn't sharpened the blade when they were. Cutting it, and really? So there was like a sheer mark across the spine. So. That's really shoddy. It is, yeah. But the ones that have come in the box so far haven't had any issues. So far, pretty it's good. It's just the singular copies that they made afterwards. But it's well worth thinking about getting down to Ryman's or somewhere and getting this spiral bound. I yeah, think. maybe. Because yeah. it's not gonna, it's not gonna stand up to the. The pages are, it's, it's photographic glossy paper, unlike the Kill Team, and it doesn't have a, uh, such a stiff edge, which is a bit of a shame. I think this will get beat up quick, sadly. Yeah. So find out yeah. soon find out <laughs> so uh, the board then so oh, a couple of notes about the book before we move on oh yeah um, this doesn't have the points in for forces 
Uh, Nothing so, at all. So the only way that if you, if you want to play, for instance, the Stormcast Eternals or the Gloom Spike Gits or uh, the Skelly Bobs, then the only way that you can do that is by buying the cards. And going to work for it. There's no no ruling in here and no no pointage. So right, you need those cards you do. to point up. Yeah. And the individual fighters are individually pointed. Yes. So I was a bit worried, like Necromunda came with fighting the cards. Yeah. But they were just pre-built fighters. Mm -hmm. These are the fighters you could build. Yeah. So for instance, for the Untamed Beasts. Your leader is 180 points, so he'll never change. There's no no way to change that 180 points. But one of your standard bobs is 55 points for so, a mook. For a mook. For your for your bottom of the barrel gentleman. So yeah, right. Even the even the even the dogs 180 points. Yeah, I think some of the beasts are quite are quite tough. Mm. I'm thinking if we have a look at the bottom, then we can yeah. talk about the fighter cards in a bit more detail. Okie dokie. Yeah, because um, I think that's worth some consideration. So this is uh, looks identical size to the kill team boards yeah. to me. Double sided, nicely. So this is the board that we've seen a lot in the previews. Yeah, it's got that kind of cracked earth look. Mm -hmm. and the, and the bottle green. So the only thing that bothers me about this is I feel my scenery is going to need to be cyan, turquoise, somewhere mm -hmm. in that to fit with this board. Yeah. Whereas the other side... Stormcast Desert. <laughs> Very much Stormcast kind of look about it, deserty. I, I can see two of these locking together quite nicely as well because mm -hmm. these are offset to each other. Oh, that's yeah. very cool. Yeah, so you, it wouldn't be a duplicate, mm. it would be, you'd have to tessellate it. Mm. But it's a nice board uh, and it folds only in four. And some of the kill team boards they folded into eight and it was right. like you yeah. know, doing a Rubik's Cube and feeling you're going to tear it down that join line every time you uh -huh. open it. Yeah, there's still that risk to that, and I think. It's also going to be more difficult to fit into a backpack now, but yeah, yeah. I'm going to struggle to fit that in. It's about the same size as my laptop, so it might fit down the back. Slot, <laughs> down the back. <laughs> All right. So should we talk about the fighter cards, talk about fighter cards. and how and, and how that might interact with the dice? Mm. I have a look at the dice. So if you want to pick so a fighter card that's exciting, there's your beastie boys. So you can have a look at them too. Let's pick out that man with the banner we keep talking about. The man with the banner. Okay, so, because um, you've had a bit of a look at the book, James, you're ahead of me. I've had a bit of a look at the book. And, um, you know, I've watched some people talking about things on YouTube, but my brain is empty. <laughs> so, so what, what, what are these Statistics steps? on the card. So yeah. the, I'm, I'm going to give you a half guide to this, because I only half remember it. The top left-hand corner, which is here, yeah. um, is what force they are allowed to be used with. It's like a keyword, but in a picture. Right. So right. That's, that's their rune for, this is specifically the Iron Golems, and that's specifically the Untamed Beasts. Yeah. So so cool. um, we then have uh, wounds, which is the bottom one here, which is pretty much the most important one. Uh, we've got an attack roll and a defense roll up the top there too. Um, then we have uh, weapon statistics, which is the bit at the bottom. Right. Um, so I'm honestly not 100 percent sure how they so work. I think that is the first one is the is, is what your weapon is, yeah. which I think is largely yes. cosmetic. It's a picture, yeah. The next one is the fighting range because it's, it's got that you can fight spears fight at two inches yeah. and that kind of stuff like Sigma yeah. has. Yep. So um, one for both of those. Then I think the next one is your is your number of attacks. Yes. So this gentleman or lady or whatever you want it to be uh, has a ranged attack and a non-range attack essentially she has a three range and a one range um, so then the, the number of attack dice mm -hmm. is the kind of dazzling sword yep. the strength of those attacks yep. to compare to your opponent's toughness uh -huh. stat, and then the damage they do when With they hit or crit. when they crit yeah yeah i think crits are on sixes crits are on sixes in all ways there's an interesting chart in the book where it says like uh on a with it's the strength versus toughness chart oh yeah and every single one of them says something to five and then six is its own separate se its separate, own separate entry so there's no confusion whatsoever what yep. happens on a six yeah so um these fighter cards are interesting and do we get fighter cards for the chaotic beasts yeah, we should get two sets yeah two sets yeah we got some for the chaotic beasts at mm -hmm. the end there okay now these i don't know whether these are for making your own fighter cards doesn't look like it does it well it doesn't it's it's members to know. Your... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
Yeah. Well, you do have three, three basic on one side stats. And three to six. And then one, two, three, four, five. Potentially, I don't know. I don't know what that is. That, um, that's the card that we're talking about. Let's get turned side by side. Let's have a quick look in the book what that actually is. I'm actually interested to find what, what that is. Right, we worked out what they are. So, what was the term that they used in there? Divider cards. Divider cards. So, so you'll, you'll, take, you'll take your fighter. If you have three of the same fighter, then you'll pop that card underneath, and you can now keep track of each one of them separately. And if you have six of the same fighter, for instance, this random gentleman, then you can have six separated tracks yeah, for that so fighter. And you maybe so really cool. and stuff, things like that. I actually yeah. like them quite a lot. Yeah? Yeah, they're good. That's an interesting idea. Uh -huh. Yeah. Dice. So, dice. Uh, you get three sets of dice. Now, at a cursory glance, these are all the same. Although you get red, uh, beigey brown, mm -hmm. and black. And I think possibly that is because there is a, a wild dice concept. Yeah, there is. As far so as I can tell, to share one set. The way I've seen that played so far, the wild dice, is tracking it without any of these dice. Right. So, I think, so yeah. In our, in our particular case, I guess we just all choose a colour. <laughs> <laughs> and do what we like with them. What else we got? Is that it? What else we got? Is I think that, that brings us that brings us to the end of it. I will say though, because we were we were having a look, um, and I've only I've literally just opened this. Yes. I know you know. I've read mine somewhat. Yeah. Is within the first few pages. There really is some nice double page art mm. to give you that kind of yeah. establishing yeah. shot, yeah. showing you what you're. So it's absolutely uh, lovely art. It really is. Yeah. Um, and hopefully and information. It's, it's the fluff section, but it's not just like a Warhammer 40k codex fluff section where it's just like page after page of information, and occasionally with a star chart. And this is new art. Mm. And the codexes, they're full of art that we've seen before. Yeah, definitely. This is this is newly commissioned, so there's a consistent style and theme to definitely. it all, I think. And a, even a colour palette, you know, this, a lot of the stuff is quite sort of monochrome, isn't it? Yes, for sure, yeah. For sure, and I, yeah. and I like that. Yeah. Well, look, I'm excited to get started. Me too. So, so in brief then, James. James, yeah. what's your what's your plans going forward? Obviously, we're going to get this stuff done. Yeah, we'll get this what stuff done. Do? Um, which warband are you going forward with? A week next Thursday, I want to get started. Which to this video means absolutely nothing, but that's quite a soon amount of time after the game is released that we want to start getting videos right. yeah. sorted and, and streamed. I mean, which warband are you going, going to go with first? Um, Where are you going to start? I'm going to, I'm going to paint the Iron Golems first. Yeah, because I think I can get them done in an afternoon. <laughs> right. Okay. Are you uh, going to fire I, up the old airbrush? Yeah, I'll get the airbrush going. Um, I'm going to start just with silver. I'm going to get a nice silver started and then contrast paint the rest right and that's it and I'll so hopefully some, some of that and and metallic will show yeah, through there definitely yeah. and a bit of highlighting and damaging up afterwards yeah and, but I want to play Gloom Spike Gifts they look fun the Boingrot Bounders and the the silly names that they have for everything <laughs> oh bless you um, <laughs> even their in-book mission so like the rest Sorry. of them are all like we need to find the warlord of this opposing team the, bit, yeah. the mission for the for the Gloom Spike Gifts is um, we ran out of bottles and we need another bottle. You need another and bottle. It's really difficult to find glass that is, bottles. That in the is a points. good reason to go to war. <laughs> yeah. Obviously. So they need more glass bottles. Of glass bottles. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I definitely want the crow dudes, but in the short term, I think I'm going to play with my mantic skeletons. Yeah. Because I kind of, I kind of got forty of them. Never use them for anything. <laughs> you know. Um, let's let's get them. Let's get them on the table. I'll be interested to see that. How you do determine different models based on a. Yeah. The skeleton ones is like skeleton with spear. Yeah. Looking at the stuff. So, that's my plan. I think John's going to have a go at the uh, Untamed Beasts. Yep. So, I was the rest of this there. I'm James Workshop. Thank you for watching.